This brings us to the end of our course on Introduction to Deep Learning. Let's go through what we've covered. We talked about how intelligence is processing information for future predictions and decisions. Information processing means narrowing the space of possibilities. For most of our everyday life activities, we're constantly making conscious and unconscious choices and decisions as a result of our information processing, where we narrow down from extremely large spaces of possibilities. AI, machine learning, and deep learning are all models that map inputs to solutions for information processing problems that generate intelligent behavior. In traditional AI, this mapping from inputs to solution was completely pre-specified. We'd tell the AI what features in the world are important and pre-specify the exact computations for mapping features to an output that is a solution to an information processing problem. Machine learning is a type of AI where we tell the models what features are important, but we let the model learn how to map these features to information processing solutions. Deep learning is a type of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks for its computations. In deep learning, we don't have to specify the features that are important for mapping inputs to solutions. We can provide a naive representation of the input, and the layers of the neural network will find the features that are most relevant for producing the outputs that solve the information processing problems we want. Artificial neural networks will learn to detect features that are most relevant for finding solutions for problems we care about, such as discerning faces, and not problems we don't care about, such as discerning white noise. This is analogous to the workings of our biological neural networks. We said that the outputs of models are considered predictions because the problems we are solving are complex and solutions are never certain. We went over some examples of inputs in various domains along with example outputs that were solutions to information processing problems. We went over three types of learning problems that machine learning and deep learning models solve, which are supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. Supervised learning is where you have a training data set that has labels for each training example. The labels can represent categories or be numerical values. But in both cases, the model's goal is to learn to predict these labels. In unsupervised learning, we have a training data set that does not have labels. So the model's goal is not to learn labels, but instead its goal is to learn patterns in this unlabeled data set. When learning about a specific category, the unsupervised learning model would learn how likely different patterns are to appear within this category and also learn about the structure within these patterns. Reinforcement learning is the third type of learning problem where we model an agent that's making choices in response to a changing environment. The agent receives positive and negative feedback in response to its choices, but this feedback is infrequent and delayed. The goal of the reinforcement learning model is to find a policy for choosing actions that maximizes the total reward for the agent. The best action will depend on the current state of the agent. Both traditional machine learning and deep learning can be used for all three types of learning problems. We went over examples of deep learning breakthroughs for all three types of problems. For supervised learning, we talked about the success in image classification, classifying images on the ImageNet dataset. For unsupervised learning, we showed deep learning models that were capable of generating fairly representative images. In reinforcement learning, 
we talked about the success of deep reinforcement learning models that were able to learn by themselves to play games to a level that could even beat human world champions. We talked about the computations of neural networks, starting with the computations of a single neuron model. A single neuron's job is to find weights for all the dimensions in its inputs and also find a bias term. A neuron computes the weighted sum of its inputs, adds the bias, and passes this total sum through an activation function to produce an output. An activation function is a filter that squashes the sum in some way. In our examples, we mostly had focused on the step activation function, which means that when the sum is greater than or equal to zero, the output will be a one, and when the sum is less than zero, the output will be a zero. We also showed the ReLU, or Rectify Linear Unit, activation function, which is actually more commonly used in modern deep learning networks. The ReLU, like the step function, outputs a zero when the sum is less than zero. But when the sum is greater than or equal to zero, ReLU outputs the sum itself. We went through an example where we used a single neuron model to help us predict whether our friend was bluffing at poker based on his mouth angle. Here we had one dimensional input consisting of the mouth angle. We collected labeled data consisting of our friend's mouth angle and whether or not he was bluffing in rounds of poker. We used a one to represent bluffing and a zero to represent truth telling to our model. We showed how a single neuron model can find values of weights and biases so that the weighted sum plus bias passed through the step activation function will output a one for mouth angles where our friend is bluffing and output a zero for mouth angles where our friend is telling the truth. And this is how our single neuron model predicted bluffing at poker. We then went through another example of a single neuron model where the input had two dimensions. Here we were predicting whether another friend was bluffing at poker based on two-dimensional input consisting of mouth angle and face color intensity. Again, we showed how the neuron could find values for weights. Now we had two weights, one for mouth angle and the other weight for face color, plus a bias term such that the weighted sum plus bias passed through an activation function could predict whether our friend was bluffing versus telling the truth. This meant the model appropriately output a one for a mouth angle and face color combination that corresponded to bluffing and would output a zero for face color and mouth angle combinations where our friend was telling the truth. We saw the visual representation of a single neuron model's computation on one dimensional data. We showed that the sum computed by the single neuron model on one dimensional data was a line on a graph where the graph's horizontal axis represented the input value, which for our example was mouth angle, and the value of the sum is represented on the vertical axis. The point where the line crosses the horizontal axis is the separation point between our different types of data, which in our example was mouth angles that corresponded to truth versus bluff. We can then visualize passing this sum through a step activation function by overlaying a step function on top of this graph positioned at the separation point between truth and bluff, showing how the activation function squashes the line into a zero or one output. We also saw the visual representation of a single neuron computation on two-dimensional data. With two-dimensional data, the input was represented in two dimensions on a graph where one dimension represents different mouth angles and the other dimension represents different face colors. To visualize the sum, we now have to see a third dimension that is sticking out of the two-dimensional graph. 
The sum computed by the neuron is now a plane that intersects this two-dimensional graph. For this two-dimensional data, the separation between truth and bluff is now defined by the line where this plane intersects the graph. The activation function is again overlaid on top, positioned at this intersection line, and shows how this plane is transformed to produce zeros and ones as outputs. Both of these situations, where our data was such that a single point could classify our one-dimensional data, and a single line could separate the classes of our two-dimensional data, are what we call linearly solvable problems. We showed that single neurons cannot solve non-linearly solvable problems, such as when we need two lines to separate the different categories in our data. We showed that by combining the outputs of single neuron computations as inputs to another neuron, the output of the whole network of multiple neurons could now find nonlinearly separable solutions that the individual neurons could not do on their own. Each neuron in this multi-neuron network is doing a linearly separable computation on its own input. But the entire network as a whole is now computing a non-linearly separable solution with respect to the data input and the final network output.